Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today we're taking a look at the first iteration of Salvage in the 318 PTU. We'll look at both the solo operators option, the Drake Vulture, and the multi-crew Aegis Reclaimer. Looking at how the different lasers work and how the different modules and other components factor in. This is also a great lens to look at the new cargo refactor mechanics through as well. With a full wipe incoming for 318, Salvage, whether you're looking to use your own ship or get involved as crew on someone else's, is going to be a great way to start the credits rolling back into your wallet. It's also a cool time to get into the game, as lots of players are going to be starting from scratch again. If you're keen to create an account after this video, just make sure you use the referral code when you do. Mine's the one up on screen, but if you have a friend who plays already, please use theirs. So if this all sounds good to you, grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, and then let's get into it. First up, apologies for a bit of breaking content from me. I'm a big believer in real life ahead of video games, so I put that into practice for myself a little bit. It was my birthday and Christmas, so I took the opportunity to spend some time with my family rather than perpetually queuing to get into the first iterations of the PTU the whole time. I also think it would have been easy to rush something out on the new salvage mechanics, but I was keen to test them as much as I could to gather a fuller understanding before putting pen to paper, so to speak. I do think it's important to stress that this is a summary of the things we've worked out so far as a result of that testing, and in no way should be construed as a solid guide. In the PTU there's always the possibility for things to change, and CIG have been running an especially long PTU this time around, so I think we should expect a fair degree of balancing ahead of 318 hitting the PU in the new year. One of the biggest things you'll notice in the PTU environment is that it's impossible not to find salvageable derelicts. Just head to anywhere with asteroids like the Grange Points or the Ring of Yella, and before you've even left the Armistice Zone, you'll be stubbing your toe on derelicts to strip down. This is because CIG clearly want folks out testing the mechanic, so I feel they've dialed the spawns up to 11. And without knowing how hard salvage will eventually be to find, it's impossible to really dial in the best methods. You'll also notice in all of the footage from the PTU that there's a message at the bottom of the screen highlighting that this is a test version of the game. So just in case you see moments of true jankiness, don't read too much into it. There is an option to salvage by hand using a new multi-tool attachment, but I'd probably look to separately look at that in another video. For ship salvaging though, you'll need one of two ships, either the Drake Vulture or the Aegis Reclaimer. The Vulture is for the solo operators, while the Reclaimer really takes a full crew to run. It might be technically possible to solo, but honestly I think it would be so tedious that it's never going to be worth it to. In terms of equipment, both ships have a pair of Bayer salvage heads attached. On the Vulture, these are mounted to dual size 1 gimbal slots at the tip of the U-shaped front, and are under direct pilot control. On the Reclaimer, these are size 2 turret mounts controlled independently by two remote turret operators who sit behind the pilot and co-pilot in the bridge of the ship. Taking control of the lasers in the Vulture works in exactly the same way as using the mining laser in a prospector. While in the pilot seat of the ship, press M on the keyboard by default to access salvage mode. In the Reclaimer you just take one of the two seats, power up here on the right, then access remote turret down at the bottom of the screen. Let's start by taking a quick look at the HUD in both ships, and the Reclaimer is arguably a bit simpler since you're only in control of a single laser. Starting at the top left we have the hull meter, showing how much of the vehicle hull piece we're looking at is left. As you can see the 890J that we're stripping down here is split into multiple segments, and this one we're on is shown by a yellow outline. This meter is showing how much hull is left in this piece rather than in the whole ship. Just while we're on the subject of the segments, the outlines designate quality. A green outline means perfect, it turns blue after any is stripped away, and then you have yellow and red, indicating decreasing density of hull. Just below the hull meter is the extraction rate. This shows the rate at which you're gathering RMC, measured in SCU. Next one down is the cargo meter. 
Within both of the salvage ships, there are filler stations which produce 1 SCU boxes of RMC. We'll take a more thorough look at these later in this vid. But this meter is showing our progress to having a full box. The circle below, currently showing 46%, is showing how much valid material that my laser is currently pointing at. This matches the circular profile of the salvage lasers themselves, and I'm going to turn this the area density. Moving over to the other side, we have a breakdown of the laser module that I'm currently using, and the other one that I haven't available, with an overview of the module's properties down below. Let's take a minute here to go through the modules because they're pretty important to understanding how hole stripping works and what the trade-offs you need to understand are when deciding what to use. There are currently three modules in game, the Cinch, Abraid and Trawler. You can equip two of these to a salvage laser and switch them by right-clicking. By default the Vulture's lasers come equipped with a Cinch and an Abraid, while the Reclaimers have an Abraid and a Trawler each. You can buy these modules, I found them in stock at Cousin Crows on Orison so you can decide on how you want to set up your ship. The three stats that separate the modules are diameter, the size of the circle, speed, the rate at which material is extracted, and efficiency, the percentage of targeted material you're able to recover. As ever in SC's industrial gameplay, it's all a case of trading off between these stats. Simply put, while the cinch covers the smallest area, it has the highest speed and efficiency, while the trawler covers the largest area but has the slowest speed and efficiency. The braid sits in between. One thing to be careful not to misread is the size difference in the circles though. It's easy to look at the 1.5 meter of the cinch and the 3.5 meter of the abraid for instance and think the abraid is covering an area 2.3 times larger. However, you need to dust off your high school maths a little and remember that the area of a circle equals pi r squared. So once you work out the area as opposed to the diameter you can see that the abraid covers an area 5.4 that of the cinch while the trawler covers 16 times that area. Something which CIG have definitely learned from with mining is making it make more sense to use the multi-crew reclaimer as opposed to just multiple solo vultures by incorporating some meaningful differences between the modules when they're equipped to the size 1 laser of the vulture versus the size 2 of the reclaimer. The diameter stats are equal between the two ships, but on the reclaimer speed is 3 times that of the vulture, while the vulture's efficiency with the same module is roughly 85% that of the reclaimers. This means mathematically that running one reclaimer with three people would make more sense than running three vultures with the same overall number. Once we factor in managing the cargo, I can see one reclaimer with four crew outpacing four vultures, each running solo. This isn't even incorporating the significant uptick in cargo space aboard the Reclaimer, allowing it to stay out much longer without trips to sell. Overall, well done CIG. So going back to the HUD, just below the properties of the laser we have the distance to target. The lasers have a range of 150 meters, and I haven't seen any differences in terms of extraction rate within that range. Switching across to the Vulture, we have much the same information, just in a slightly different format. Cargo extraction rate and vehicle hull meters are along the top, while the module information and range are down the sides, with one set for each laser. At the bottom you have the indicator for material density within the area, and in between these is a bar showing the distance between your lasers. By holding ALT and scrolling the mouse wheel up and down you can adjust how far apart your lasers are horizontally. By holding left ALT and clicking right mouse button, you can change the axis, so you can change vertical separation after that by holding left ALT and scrolling the mouse wheel as well. So that's probably enough theory, let's get our hands dirty in a Drake Vulture to show off the actual process, and afterwards we can take a look at the scaled up version in the Reclaimer. Before you head off, you'll just need to make sure that you've got yourself a Pyro multi-tool and a true hold tractor beam attachment. This is going to be essential for salvaging since you'll need to move the boxes around and they won't be liftable by hand. There's a uh, hint in a dev post that we're going to be able to get the ability to make these items using the filler stations, but using one RMC to make a tractor beam makes it one expensive tractor beam. And don't forget a gun, it's 318, piracy's going to be a thing. So here we have our Drake Vulture. You can get into the back, but you can also use this handy side ladder, which will let you hop straight into the cab and into the pilot seat. Not only does this improve the amount of time taken to, uh, to get into the action, I think it also just really adds to the industrial feel of the ship, sort of hauling your way up that yellow ladder. And I have to say, don't shoot me for this, 
I always really liked the Prospector, but I never could quite love it, uh, whereas I do instantly love the Drake Vulture. So I'm going to be leaving Arc Corp and heading off to Arc L1, one of the Lagrange points near Arc Corp itself, uh, and then we'll find a bunch of asteroids and, in this patch at least, asteroids means derelicts. Arc L1 is only a short hop away from Arc Corp, but just to save a bit of time, I'm going to use the magic of video editing to travel there a bit quicker. And as if by magic, we're here at Arc L1. And as you can see immediately, we can see these icons which indicate salvageable material. So I'll just zoom in on one of those so you can get a good look at it. So much like the HUD icons we get for asteroids, we've got these ones for derelicts. And a neat little trick that I found is you can target them with T, and then as long as you change one of your MFDs to target status, you can use that to just indicate your distance to the uh, derelict, since they don't ping a distance return. They can be a bit hard to judge how close you are to them. But using this little trick makes it a little bit smoother and you can hopefully slow down in time before you crash into an A90 jump. And this is what I meant though by the fact that the derelicts are clearly dialed up to 11. I don't think every asteroid cluster is going to be just littered with crashed 890 jumps. But as you approach the derelict you're going to want to hit M on your keyboard to switch to salvage mode. And if you've got a joystick set up, it'll be just whatever you've got mining mode mapped to at the moment. And here we can see the different coloured segments. So the derelicts tend to only have red and yellow on them. When I've shot down some bounties, which I've done some small testing on, I was able to get some green and some blue segments. We're going to start with the yellow since it indicates that higher density compared to the red. Popping your lights on with L can help a bit, although the lights on the, the Vulture are not that great. And click left mouse button once to start the lasers going. As you can see, the cinch module, which it defaults to, is quite slow. Uh, but if we switch to the abrade with right mouse button, we can start getting a much higher extraction rate that you can see in the middle of the screen of the HUD. So here we are though, sacrificing some of the efficiency, so we're not getting every scrap that we could if we used a cinch and took more time. You can direct the beams with the nose of the ship, but press G to engage gimbaled mode and you'll have a much better time smoothly navigating the lasers. And you can also look, because these are currently all focused together, these two beams. So you can look to separate the beams slightly, by just holding ALT and rolling your mouse wheel. And this can just let you spread them out a bit. I've been experimenting around with it because obviously when you've got the two lasers pointed on exactly the same spot, you're doubling up on the speed at which you're extracting that spot. So I don't think separating the lasers is necessarily to do with improving speed. It's I think more about getting the most out of your lasers when you're navigating different pieces of the hull. And once you hit that one SCU, you'll get this orange warning telling you that the filler station's ejecting. You will stop salvaging at that point because you can't get any RMC into the filler station while it's processing. We don't need to hop out of the seat just yet because the filler station can eject one automatically and then we can put another one into it. So you only have to move out of the seat every two SCU that you produce in the Vulture. Honestly, I've been actually really enjoying the whole process of salvaging. Feels a little bit like reverse painting. And just trying to find the best way to efficiently strip the hull is uh, quite cathartic in a way. And while you're doing this, if you want to really try and judge how well you're doing, just keep an eye on that extraction rate. I've seen on a vulture it peak out at about 0.00022. So finally, once you've got the second SCU ready, you'll get that red HUD over the filler station uh, icon. That's, that's indicating that the filler station is now obstructed, so you have to move to the back of the ship. Go through these two doors and down the ladder, which will take you to the cargo hold. And there we have our first box, which was automatically ejected from the station. So if we just pull out our tractor beam, we'll be able to lift that. And the blue indicator is showing where it will snap to the cargo grid can then look at the filler station and we can eject 
the second box, which will come off the line there. And that one we can also then stack. Now that those two boxes are stowed, you want to make your way back to the pilot seat where you can resume salvaging. As we come up, we'll see we've got some component housing here, got a very basic kitchen and living area. Got our Shoilet, standard CIG. And like I say, I think the Drake Vulture is just a really neat little package. I think it imparts that whole industry on the peripheries of the verse a little bit better to me than the Prospector ever did. When you sit back down in the seat, it will have defaulted back to the cinch. So if you want to use the abrade, which is the one that I'm currently favouring, uh, then you'll need to right click to switch over. A little bug to just watch out for is sometimes it registers the change, but it doesn't actually do it. So it will show you as on the abrade, but you'll be notably slower. So just keep an eye on the properties, and if it still says 1.5 meters, that means that that hasn't actually switched over from the cinch. So just right click to go back to the cinch, and right click to come to the abrade again, and make sure that you've got that 3.5 meter diameter. I'm going to continue salvaging this 890 jump, and we're going to skip ahead until I've got more of a full cargo hold. So sometime later, this took me about 15-20 minutes, I've got my full 12 SCU cargo grid stacked up. Should be noted that there's plenty of space down the side if you want to add extra boxes just off the grid. They might move around a bit and it can get a bit janky, but it's a good way to get some extra salvage crammed into this small ship. We've managed in our testing to get as much as 21 SCU if we also use the space of just off the uh, filler station and holding an extra SCU in the filler station itself. But just for the purposes of this demonstration, I just went with the 12 SCU. To sell up, just head to a location that will buy your RMC. To save a bit of time, because it's quite late at night when I'm recording this footage, I'm heading to Samson and Sons Scrapyard on Walla. It's on the outer edge of the Arcourt planetary system, closer to Arcal 1 where I was, and it's thin Atmo, so it makes travel there quick. However, the prices on offer at scrapyards are decidedly lower than that offered by TDDs on the planets. I found on average the scrapyards are paying just over 5 credits per unit at the moment, which would make my haul of 12 SEU worth a little over 60k. But planet side I could get more like 7.5 credits per unit, or 90k for a full 12 SEU. I think realistically it makes more sense to hit the TDD, However, the Reclaimers, which are big heavy ships ill suited to heavy planetary atmo, sacrificing credits for reduced travel time might make sense to favour the scrapyards. We'll have to test that more fully in the future to be sure. But this does serve the purpose of just taking a look at the new commodity kiosks in 3.18. So if I just go to use, and then I switch this over to sell, I can select my Drake Vulture from this drop down here. And you want to just give it a little second until the grid pops up. And that shows that I've got my 12 SCU of RMC. So I can drag this slider all the way across to sell my 12 units, giving me my price of just over 60k. So I can click on the sell button just to the right of where it's giving the credits that I'm offered. And then that will give me an option to take the deal, which in this instance I'm going to. Like I say, probably the TDD would be a better choice, particularly if I'd had more time. Something which we did put to the test that I'm very happy to say worked is transferring cargo out of the Vulture and into a cargo ship. So I gave one of my org mates my Vulture, and I took out my Cutlass Black, just because I like the whole Drake on Drake vibe. We were then able to tractor beam the boxes across from the Vulture into the Cutty, and once we'd got a fair few stacked up, took it off to sell down at the TDD on Norville. And in this way, a couple of friends could easily take advantage of a much larger cargo hold to keep a vulture out in the field doing its thing for a lot longer, without the bother of heading off to sell. It's also worth noting that while the vulture is a one-person ship, having a mate working the cargo management in the back can make you a lot quicker without the need to get in and out of the seat every two SEU. I'm not sure that it'll make you twice as quick, 
but it might make it a lot more enjoyable in the experience, and if you happen to own a vulture for cash, it could let a friend who doesn't own one play a useful part in the salvage shop. And if you're a good friend, you can always switch seats and let them have a go at the scraping. So let's look at how this same process plays out in the much larger Reclaimer. For those of you who prefer to play solo, you might not like what I say next. Purely theoretically, you could solo a Reclaimer, but there's no way it's going to be either more profitable or more enjoyable than sticking to the smaller, solo-focused Vulture. This is purely down to the Reclaimer's size. So while in mining with the Mole, you can feasibly move between the pilot seat and the turret without too much hassle, Moving from the Reclaimer's bridge all the way to its salvage processing deck to move every 4 SEU just isn't ever going to be worth it. Plus, what you'd be missing out on is probably some of the best multi-crew gameplay I've personally experienced. Most of your crew will congregate on the bridge of the ship, and the quickest way to access this is up the side elevator, but one downside here is that it's strictly a one-person lift, so if everyone's looking to get on at once it could help to go up in the main elevator and through the ship itself. The pilot seat is at the front, with these two chairs behind controlling a laser mounted on a remote turret. The Reclaimer turrets have an advantage in terms of speed, so using the Abrade modules you can make incredibly quick process churning out RMC. Down in the salvage processing deck there are two filler stations, with each laser having an independent one. There's a snappable cargo grid off to the side which you can lock boxes to, if you haul them into the elevator you can take them down to the actual cargo hold which can hold a lot of boxes. If you want to be a bit quicker you can chuck the boxes down to the deck directly below, but here you have to store them loose since it doesn't appear to have a snappable grid, even though CIG showed that working in one of their previous videos. Hopefully that's one of the issues which will just get fixed in the PTU. However, regardless of whether it snaps or not, this does give you a lot of extra space and save some time. It's essential to have at least one crewmate down in the processing deck pulling the boxes out, but for good operation with all of the organisation that's required to keep the RMC flowing, I think it's preferable to have two players on this task, meaning a total crew of five. Theoretically, I think you could run the ship well with as few as three of you. If you had one player alternate between piloting and scraping, a dedicated turret operator and a dedicated cargo manager, but it would probably be quite stressful all round. We've run a few tests with five of us on the ship and honestly, while the loop itself is quite simple, the feeling of a large ship like this humming with activity and industry is really awesome. I just need to have a word with Lion's Mane, the captain of that particular outing, about his health and safety record since flying boxes led to two of us stumbling off the ship with tier 3 leg injuries. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video, I hope it was useful, and if you think I've earned it, consider hitting the all-important like and subscribe buttons. As refreshed from my little break, I'll be diving into more of 318 content. A big shout out to the folks at Frontier who got involved with this testing. The Reclaimer in full swing is some of the most enjoyable Moe crew gameplay I've experienced in SC, and while we were chewing away the holes, there was a lot of time to have a good laugh and get to know Orc mates better. I really hope OpenPTU comes along before too long so we can get more people involved. And if you're on the lookout for a fairly chilled out community to join, feel free to pop into our Discord, the link's just in the video description down below. As we get closer to a live version of the PTU, I'll be putting together a more complete guide, containing info on preferred loadouts, bounties for salvage as opposed to derelicts, optimal modules and crew sizes etc. But for the time being, we'll just have to wait and see a bit on how things develop and keep testing. I'm sure there's stuff we've missed, but like I say, it's early days for now. If I've made any glaring omissions, be sure to let me know in the comments so that I can get on top of them ahead of the real guide. But with all that said, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.